So, today's video is going to be about these two gizmos over here. Um, they're strange devices and they certainly look like they were made in the 60s or 70s or 80s. And if I look on the label, they are Dynastat DS120s made by Testone Electrostatics Corporation. And I did a bit of Googling and that company is no longer around, but there are products with this or similar names and what they appear to be is electrostatic eliminators that presumably do that by spewing out a stream of air that has been slightly charged to produce ions, which will make it slightly conductive and in turn will bleed off the electric charges from whatever you don't want to have electricity on. So with that in mind, what I thought we would do is take them apart and see if they still work and see how they work. If we look at this thing a bit, um, the most interesting part is I guess one would call it the front where the air blows out and I don't know how visible it is in the video but there are these little pin shaped things on these rods and that's a dead giveaway that this is doing something with electrostatics because by having a very pointed shape you end up creating the highest electric field possible for a given voltage. And that is a great way to cause something like a corona discharge, which is probably what's going to be used to make the ions. Presumably the air blows through and then there is of course this shielding to prevent you from touching these little bits of charged metal and getting zapped. It is surprisingly close, however, and it would be quite easy to touch them and have bad things happen. So I think the first thing to do will be to plug the unit in and then with a screwdriver, I'm going to very carefully touch those pins and see if we can notice any form of electrical discharge. So with that in mind, I'm plugging it in off screen and there's a switch on the back so I'm going to flip it over so you can see it and try and turn the switch and the fan works so that's a good sign and now I'm going to try and keeping the end of the screwdriver grounded against the case move it close to those sharp needle like points and I'm getting absolutely nothing. So it would appear that this thing probably has some sort of failure in the high voltage circuitry. So I guess what we're gonna have to do is take it apart and figure out why. So I'm just switched it off again. And before I forget, I'm gonna unplug it from the wall so I don't get zapped and the only place that we can really take it apart, just looking at it, is these four screws on the bottom. Oddly, somebody has drawn some little circles as if they were going to drill some extra holes. And they're almost at the same spacing as these screws. So whether they were going to modify the item who knows? Strangely enough, on the other unit, there are these same marks. Um, is there anything else to look at? Well, here's the weird thing. On the side of it, we have a rivet that's holding presumably this maybe to the side. Um, there's a rivet on the other side. If, we, if I look inside, it does not look like these screws here that are holding the the stand um, have anything to do with holding it together. So I guess the first thing to do will be 
to unscrew these and see if something bad happens. So we will try that right now. So did that do any good? Uh oh, well, a nut clearly fell out. So it probably means this is not the right thing to do. And now we're really committed to taking this whole thing apart. Now, even though these screws don't look like they're doing anything other than attaching the stand to the case. Um, what I'm going to do is get a wrench and we'll unscrew the nuts just in case I was wrong. Okay, so let's see what happens if we try and unscrew them. And the only thing that happens is the whole screw turns which essentially means um, that's not going to be very useful. All right. Is there anything else we can do to take it apart? The only thing that appears reasonable would be to try and drill out these rivets and see what happens. And hopefully I'm careful enough that once they're drilled out, what we can do is replace them with a screw if we're able to revive this device. Okay, so here are the rivets. Maybe we'll position the thing against the stand so it's a little bit more visible. And let's try drilling out the, the rivets. That's one. Came out pretty nicely. And let's try the other side now. Okay. So those rivets are out. Does that loosen this at all? Aha! That did something. There was just a little bit extra rivet material holding things in. Let's try and get that apart. Does it need a bit more drilling maybe? There we go. Ah, and that will now come apart with a bit of luck. Or not. So it's like there's something holding it in at the top. I don't know what that might be. Oh, here we go. And it's now come apart. So it was in fact the rivets holding it all together. And the bolts coming through the side were really just bolts and meant simply to hold this case over here. So what do we have inside? Well, we have a fan, which we saw working quite nicely. And as one might expect, there is a transformer over here. And it's the transformer screws, in fact, that you can maybe see right here that were the screws on the bottom that I tried loosening in a failed attempt to take the box apart. And my guess would be is maybe these transformers have failed and that's why somebody had drawn some markings on the bottom here because they were going to replace the transformer. So I think the thing to do will be to take those screws out completely and we'll see if a bit more of an inspection of the 
transformer turns up anything useful. transformer should fall out as soon as this last screw is done. Yes, and it did. So here it is. Didn't fall out very easily, that's for sure. Can we get it out of here? Yes. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Here we go. All right, so now we can look at it a bit more. And um, what you can see here is a heavily insulated wire over here. And that wire actually goes to the grid of electrostatic points in the airflow and it looks like there is some sort of a device let me just move this over so you can see it a bit better there is some sort of a device attaching this heavily insulated wire to the heavily insulated wire that goes into the transformer and my guess is is that this is some sort of a resistor to reduce the current flow Either that or it's a diode and I'm going to take a closer look in a minute. And then coming out the bottom of the transformer over here is a green wire and my guess is that is the low voltage side of the high voltage winding and it's being taken right to one of the um, screws through the core presumably to um, ground the whole thing. So. With that in mind, um, let's put this thing on its side like that so we have a little bit better access to it. And I am going to take a closer look at this device over here and we'll see if we can figure out what it is. It does appear to have a resistor marking on it, so we're going to assume it's a resistor. And I was thinking a little bit about how can we test this transformer, particularly not knowing what this voltage is going to be, and guessing that it's probably going to be something like five or 10,000 volts. The best way to do it will be to reduce the voltage to the transformer by using a device like a variac and what the variac is is a transformer with a movable tap and I can use that to gradually increase the voltage from 0 to 130 volts or so and while we're doing that I'm going to attach a expendable voltmeter over here Expendable meaning if this produces a higher voltage and blows up the voltmeter, I'm not going to be too upset. So what we're going to do is we'll attach that voltmeter to the high voltage output of the transformer. That alligator clip is kind of slippery to put it mildly. That's weird. Okay, so we've got the high voltage connected to the red wire of the expendable voltmeter. And we're going to use a green alligator clip to attach the black wire to the shield, the case, maybe right to the 
ground wire on the transformer. I have it all hooked up. I'm going to take the power plug from our device and hook it into the variac. And now we will try increasing the voltage and see if we can see anything happening. I don't remember whether I had the fan on or not. I shouldn't say that. I don't remember whether I had the power switch on or not. I guess it's not on, so we will try that again. Okay, so I'll just turn on the power switch. I think it's on now. It must be on because I'm seeing the fan start up and I am not seeing anything in terms of high voltage from the transformer. So that's really not a very good sign. So before I forget, I'm going to unplug the variac so I don't zap myself. And maybe what we're going to try and do is use this voltmeter, switch to its ohm section. It's working. It is. What we should be able to do is see if we can get any sort of continuity across there and the answer is yes we get what looks like can that be a hundred ohms this reduce the scale a bit no it's not a hundred ohms it's way higher than that I guess that's on the 200k scale we're seeing Oh, now I'm getting nothing. I was, yeah, I thought I was getting something, but I guess I'm not. I am getting absolutely nothing across here. And that's really quite disappointing. checking to see if the voltmeter is still working. You see I do have a connection there and I don't have anything here. So very sadly it would appear that this transformer somehow has opened and because of that we are completely out of luck in terms of making this device work and that would also explain why someone looked at perhaps making some other holes at the bottom of the case here because maybe they were thinking about changing the transformer. So just for fun, since we've got it all out, let's see if the primary winding of the transformer is any good. So this is the primary winding of the transformer over here. I'm going to, well, just check that the voltmeter is going. It is. Attach it on the primary. And, you know, I'm getting absolutely nothing on the primary either. Now I'm beginning to suspect my voltmeter. So I'm going to just get a different voltmeter just to prove that it is, in fact, not this voltmeter that's messed up because that would be too bad. All right, here's a slightly better voltmeter. And we'll just move it over to 
the ohm side of things and power it up. You can see it there. And if I short it, it does so a show it does show a short. That's a tongue twister. And let's see what happens over here. And once again, I get absolutely nothing on the primary. And let's see what I get on the secondary. Absolutely nothing. And just for fun, we'll just see if we get anything from the secondary to either of the primary wires. And the answer is absolutely not. So sadly, this high voltage transformer has seen better days. It's kind of bizarre that one might end up with both the primary and the high voltage secondary wires being open and I can't even think of what might have caused that unless there is some sort of a connection inside perhaps a thermally activated circuit protection device as you often get on both of those wires although it's very weird that you would have it on the the high voltage one as well anyway I guess what that means is this device is sadly deader than a doornail and I'm looking at it and the one thing I'm going to do afterwards is see if I can take see if I can slide this gizmo which you can sort of see looking down here with the spikes out of it because that might be quite useful for some static electric experiments later on. But before I go any further doing that, I think what might be interesting will be to look at the other one and see if it has the same problem. This is the second unit which I've opened up and what I'm going to try and do is see if we can measure the voltage on the secondary of the high voltage transformer on this one or whether it's messed up like the other one. So with that in mind I'm just going to attach the leads from the voltmeter to it and plug the thing into our friend the variac over here. It helps if we plug the correct one into it. And the variac gets plugged into the wall and we'll power it up. And the fan is going. And are we seeing any voltage? And the answer is nothing to speak of. I mean, we're looking at a fraction of a volt, but I mean, who knows? That might just be electrical noise. So it would appear that the second device has the same problem as the first device. And I guess it might be worthwhile just once again seeing if the both primary and secondary of the transformer is once again messed up. So these are the two secondary transformer wires and we'll just convert the voltmeter back to ohms is that working yes it is so here we go 
two secondary wires, this one attached to the first lead. Absolutely nothing going on when we probe the second lead and nothing going on if we try either one of those leads to the high voltage winding. And finally, we will go from the high voltage winding to anything on the case and we get absolutely nothing. What a disappointment. So with that in mind, I'm just going to get the one that we removed over here. Oh, and look, one interesting thing is it does have what looks like a date code on the transformer. So 11073, so it was probably made in 1973. Um, that would sort of correspond to when that a company appeared to be active because I did find some patents that were assigned to that company in either the 60s or 70s and I'm just pulling some of the stuff off here and just to see if we can see any sort of protection device but sadly there is absolutely nothing. My guess is that since in both cases, both windings appear to be open, what I'm wondering is if somewhere in here there is something like either a, well, there would be a solder connection or alternately a crimp connection that has failed. And if the low voltage winding was still working, what you might see happening is an arc occurring in here as it jumps over the slight failure in the connection to the secondary high voltage winding. But the unfortunate thing is the primary winding is, as you would expect, right at the inside of the transformer. So we really don't have any hope at all in terms of trying to fix the transformer. So I guess the only thing that I can really do at this point is see if I can scavenge things that might be useful in the future. And to that end, it looks like the fan is just slided in here slided slid in here and in theory we should be able to yes just pry it up it's actually a rather nice fan um, I guess what I'm going to do before I try and pull it up anymore is maybe cut the transformer out and um, well these wires are in fact loose so it's not a problem there but I'm going to cut this wire over here so we can get rid of the transformer. Okay, so that'll make things a bit easier now. Let's see if we can slide the fan out. It's certainly wedged in tightly, very tightly as a matter of fact. this here I can have a bit more leverage to help pull the fan up. There we go. Okay, so there's the fan. A rather nice little unit. It uses a shaded pole AC motor, unlike a lot of the fans we see in computers these days, which use DC motors and um, are generally built 
smaller and operate probably at higher speeds and have a much shorter lifetime. This fan, clearly built in the 70s, um, is still working as we saw. So I'm going to keep that because you never know when you need a fan. And now what we need to do is see if we can slide out this static electricity assembly. Um, looks like just like the fan that it is just slid in there but somehow wedged in but it should actually just slide up so let's see if if we have any hope of doing that just trying to loosen things up a bit one of the reasons i'd like to keep this is i've always wanted to build a van de graaff generator and this assembly would be great for charging the belt that carries the charge up into the um, spherical assembly at the top of it. Ah, here we go. It's beginning to, to come up now. There we go. And there we go. So we have that assembly and um, okay. I was just wondering how these discharge points are all connected together. Um, this looks like some sort of a plexiglass or Lexan type material, which would be a good high voltage insulator. And over here we can see on this side there is some sort of a thin metal film or tape or something that connects these three bars together and then our high voltage wire attaches to the bottom here. So I'm going to keep that and the fan and I guess the only other things that might be useful in here is the power cord which still looks in good shape. Um, or the power switch doesn't look like it's in that good a shape. So um, with having said that, I'll probably keep the power cord. They're always useful to have for one project or another. I have a fan. I have the static discharge assembly. And sadly, we don't have any chance of resurrecting one of these units to actually make it work. So off camera I'm gonna strip out the same parts from this one and put it in my parts bin and um, I guess that ends this video and sadly the outcome is not what I had hoped I'd really hope we could get this thing going so until next time and some other weird device that ends up in my hands <laughs>